Welcome everybody and happy Tuesday. Hopefully your Monday hasn't carried over. Tomorrow is a big day for Battlefield 5 as we're getting the update 6.2 which contains both the weapons rebalancing and tank customization. But this video isn't going to be about update 6.2 or the desperately needed changes that it brings. This is about what Battlefield 5 needs to do to keep the momentum rolling. Now, hopefully update 6.2 will bring back some players who haven't fully given up on this game yet. May have, regardless of what EA or DICE do, and others still believe that 6.2 does not go far enough, refusing to play until TTK is fully reverted to the values it had in update 5.0. Now I would urge anyone out there to at least try the game after 6.2 comes out before writing it off, but of course, you do you. For that, hopefully boost in the player base, what can DICE do to help retain their players? Well, tell me I'm wrong, but Battlefield 5 needs two things above all else. Auto balance and anti-cheat. Now I've heard the argument that if you want to avoid hackers, you should just play console, as cheating is a lot less common over there. Now while this is true, and I understand what point the argument is making here, I really have to wholeheartedly disagree with that take. People on PC are paying the same price as people on console, you know, they're playing the exact same AAA game from the exact same developers. And as such, they should have a reasonable expectation of servers relatively free of cheaters. Now, I understand there are always going to be people who cheat and hack and just generally try to ruin the game for others, call it griefing or whatever you want. And I also know that any anti-cheat is only going to be so effective in the sense that nothing is going to be 100% effective. People are always innovating and finding new ways to get around things. Having said that though, the game right now, the way it is, it's in desperate need of an anti-cheat. I'm legitimately unsure if it has one, or if it's just in a big need of an overhaul. Now this is just a little anecdotal, so take that for what it's worth, but in the past week I've played in two matches where a hacker absolutely ruined the game for everyone. In one match, a friendly flank that I was a part of was shut down by an enemy using aimbot. From there, the enemy took two objectives and just steamrolled our team to win the playing breakthrough. And this player picked up 118 kills in what I would estimate was about 7 minutes of actual gameplay. So that was pretty frustrating, as you might imagine, and if we fast forward a few days, I was on the other side of that coin. It was a really fun, really fun, exciting match, again on breakthrough, and you know, we held and we held and we held, only to lose not just the first sector, but the second sector as well. When the enemy team was on their last push, they'd run out of tickets, but they were on the objective and they were able to capture it to take the sector. It was extremely frustrating to come so close to victory, only to give up land at the last second. But also, it was really amazing to play in such a close, tightly contested match. You know, every kill mattered, every inch gained or lost had significant consequence. Now we're in the third sector, and that's when our friendly, quote-unquote, friendly, hacker joined. Now I don't remember exactly how many tickets the enemies had, I think it was around 200 or so. This guy comes in, and in one sector, he eliminates 108 enemies himself. Over half the tickets gone just to this one player. As you can imagine, and I know that not everyone feels this way, although I feel like everyone should feel this way, my team got the victory, but it felt completely hollow, completely worthless. We didn't earn that win. It's impossible to fight against a defender with aimbots, a guy who can shoot through walls, who can shoot through solid ground. You can't defend against it. Like, what are you going to do? That, to me, the win was almost more frustrating because that was overall a better match. And it was just completely ruined by one hacker. That's all it takes. I, I don't know what else to say, guys. Yeah, Battlefield 5 sorely needs anti-cheat. You know, these two matches that I quickly point out, they're the most blatant examples. But for each of them, I've got to think that there are, I don't even know how many, maybe dozens of others who are more discreet and just kind of skate by under the radar. And I've thought about this for a bit, and I mean, I know it's not what we want to hear and it's not the ideal scenario, but if only for the sake of the next Battlefield game, we'll call it Battlefield 6 for lack of a better title, I just, I really would like DICE to implement any kind of anti-cheat that it has now, kind of use Battlefield 5 as the testing ground for what will become the anti-cheat in the next game. 
Again, I know it's become kind of a meme how Battlefield 5 is a community test environment. That's why it doesn't have a community test environment. But ultimately, if we implement anything now and we tweak it and work on it, it's still going to make this game better and it will definitely make future games better. And with that out of the way, we come to the team balance or the auto balance, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but I'm sure most of you have. After a match, there's always a certain amount of player turnover. The issue in Battlefield 5, however, is how often rounds start with a disproportionate player count. Adding to the mystery here is not only do existing players not get shuffled based on skill and team number, but a team with, say, 10 more players than its opponent, they can still get new players to join their side instead of the short man team. I, I don't know what to say guys, it absolutely blows my mind. You can literally tab to hold the scoreboard and watch the enemy team, who's got six, seven, eight more players than you, gain more as people join the server. Dice please. This is a AAA game without adequate auto balance or anti-cheat. I don't feel like this is really a big ask, although I do realize that it would take time and resources, and I hope that these are things that you're already investing time and resources into. Now there are still plenty of players who support and play this game regularly. I know that DICE is hoping that they'll be able to pick up new players and that old players will return to the game as well. Update 6.2 is a good first step, but it can't stop there. You need to keep the momentum rolling if you want people to continue playing your game. Now these two measures, that being the anti-cheat and auto balance, I think they'll go a long way in helping you achieve those goals. But once again guys, if you disagree, tell me I'm wrong. I'd really love to hear your comments down below. But that's going to be all for this one guys. If you like this video, please do hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing for more content. And as always, if you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Until next time guys, have a good one.